postgraduate planning. There are so many directions you can go. Where do you think you're heading? What are your postgraduate plans? How far along are you in the process? What supports could still be helpful? These are questions your school counselor is going to ask you when you have your senior meeting this fall. And it's time to get your ducks in a row. Are you planning to go straight to a job or career? Are you hoping to enroll in a certification program? Are you planning to take a gap year? Are you planning to go into the military? Your school counselor can set up a job shadow or apprenticeship, help you research and understand the certification process, research careers and find your strengths using Naviance, help you research and locate gap year programs, and also assist with questions about enlisting in one of the armed forces or connecting you with a recruiter. Is a two-year community college in your future? Your school counselor can figure out where and when to take the SAT, add your school to Naviance, request a transcript, or put you on the list for the same day admit program in December. This program is a wonderful chance to have somebody review your application here at FHS and give you a decision on the spot instead of waiting the four to six weeks. Or are you thinking about a four-year school? It's quite a maze to navigate, but we are here to help you. Where are you falling on the stress meter Some of you may be in the green, some in the yellow, and some may be approaching that orange and red. Regardless of where you fall on the stress meter we're here to support you, and hopefully some of the tools we provide will help you stay more in that yellow and green. So the first thing we'll go over is the college application process. This information is in the packet that we handed out to all students at the junior meeting in the spring. If you didn't receive one at the time, we have plenty of copies in the guidance office, and we also have copies of just some of the individual forms to help you out. So quick review is the first step is paying attention to your application deadlines. Most of these are going to be between November and February, but that's not the rule. So there may be an occasional school that has a deadline in October or maybe not until March. So that's a really important thing to pay attention to. Number two, plan to take all your standardized tests prior to the end of the first semester, which is the end of January. Um, you can register online with the College Board or with the ACT. Um, the websites are listed here, and also there is the FHS code 200385 in case you need that information for registration. Number three, you need to give at least three weeks notice to your teachers who are writing your letters of recommendation for you. Many of them are writing more than one letter, and it's common courtesy to give them plenty of time. There's a form in that folder that's called the Senior Student Plea for a Teacher Letter Recommendation. This is helpful for your, recommendation, your recommenders because they'll know where you're applying, when you're applying, and also kind of why you felt like they were a good match to write you a letter of recommendation. You can find that again in your folder, or there's also plenty of copies in the guidance office. Number four, you must list each college you're applying to in Naviance along with the deadline. If we don't see that information in Naviance, then we can't send those important documents, your transcripts, your letters of recommendation. None of that has anywhere to go if we don't have schools listed in Naviance and if we don't know when they're due. Number five, you will send to each of your colleges your completed application, your essay, application fees, and test scores. That is the student's responsibility. Along with that, number six, you will need to contact the College Board and or ACT to have your test scores sent directly to the schools in which you are applying. Colleges want score reports sent directly from the testing companies, not from Freeport High School. So that is the student's responsibility to connect with the College Board and or ACT to have those scores sent. And something students should know is that when you go online and make the request, they're not sent immediately. Oftentimes scores are sent in batches, so your scores could be sent tomorrow or they may not be sent for another week. So make sure you give yourself plenty of time before your deadline to send your scores. Number seven, apply early for financial aid. You may now file as early as October 1st. 
the FAFSA is found online and make sure that when you fill that out that there is no fee attached. It is a free financial aid form, but there are some websites out there that are going to try to scam you. So make sure that when you fill out your FAFSA, it's at this specific website, fafsa.ed.gov. Some schools also require the CSS profile, which is an additional financial aid form. And you should check with each of your schools for their requirements. You can go to their financial aid websites and you will find exactly what they require for all of their financial aid. Not every school requires a CSS profile, but the ones that do often want it around the same time as your application, which is different from the FAFSA, which can be submitted pretty much any time along the way for application process. The senior questionnaire can be found in your packet, but also we have plenty of copies here in the guidance office and we are emailing it to all of you right now. So check your email if you prefer to do it electronically. This questionnaire is completely confidential. It's not shared with anyone and it's super, super helpful for your counselor who writes you a letter of recommendation. Every counselor writes a personalized letter of recommendation for every student, and these questions just help us make that letter even more awesome than it already was. So again, just some uh, reminders about the parts of a typical college application is the student completes the application, the essay, application fee and if it is required the SAT and or ACT scores that is the student's responsibility and the guidance office will send your official FHS transcript along with the school profile and then your individualized letter of recommendation. Naviance you must use Naviance you haven't used it all that much up until this point but now you're going to be using it a lot there is a direct link to your common application through Naviance, and the guidance office is unable to upload transcripts without that link. Um, you'll be requesting your teacher recommendations through Naviance, and also all of your college applications, whether they're common app or non-common app, that's how we track deadlines, that's how we know when students have been admitted, so a lot of important information goes into Naviance in your senior year. So to log into Naviance, go to this website, and then your username, in case you've forgotten it, is your school email address. Your password is something you created, and you may have changed it along the way, um, and maybe even forgotten it. So if that's the case, you can click on Forgot Your Password, and then there are some easy prompts to reset it. The guidance office does not have your password. We can reset it for you um, to something different, but we don't just have it on file, so it's actually quicker if you just use that retrieval tool. Once you've logged into Naviance, you're going to be here on this home screen. You're going to see the Colleges tab at the top, but also under My Favorites, you'll see Colleges I'm Thinking About and Colleges I'm Applying To. At this point, most likely you're going to start moving some of those Colleges I'm Thinking About into those Colleges I'm Applying To. So I spoke earlier about matching that Naviance account to your Common App, and in order to do that, you have to have started your Common Application, and you have to have completed certain portions of that Common App as well, because you need to sign your FERPA waiver. And that FERPA waiver is you authorizing um, the Common App and your school to communicate with colleges, um, again, with all school-related information. And so uh, you have to have the education portion of your Common App complete. And in that packet, we gave you a slip of paper that has all of the information you need to do that. So it will tell you about your class size. It will tell you about our GPA, whether or not it's weighted or unweighted, which it's unweighted. It will tell you if we rank, which we don't. It will tell you your counselor information. All of that can be found on that slip of paper inside your packet. If you've lost it, we have plenty in the guidance office or you can always reach out to your school counselor. So once that FERPA waiver is signed, then you can go back to your Naviance account and you'll see this red bar at the top of the colleges I'm applying to. When you select match accounts, it will ask you for the email address you used for your common application. You enter that, you enter your birthday, 
and then you select match and it's magical all of the colleges from your common application will populate into your Naviance account and so then we will be able to see all of the colleges that you are planning to apply to. You will want to go through and make sure all of the deadlines are updated. So if you're applying early, we know that we need to send your transcripts ASAP versus maybe waiting for a little bit. Naviance is also where you're gonna do teacher recommendation requests. And at the bottom of the colleges you're applying to, there is a link to teacher recommendation request. The screen ultimately looks like this. And when you select add request, there'll be a drop down. We'll go over all of this again in your senior meeting, but we just want you to have an awareness that Naviance is where you need to actually request your teacher recommendations. Have the conversation first. Please have the conversation first. Make sure the teacher is on board with writing your letter of recommendation, and then go into Naviance and add the request. If you don't add the request in Naviance, your teachers cannot upload your letter of recommendation. So, once your colleges are in Naviance, the guidance office will send an official transcript, a school counselor report, a school profile, and a school counselor letter of recommendation. This information at the bottom is super important for you to know. For students who are applying before the end of the first semester in January, which is the majority of you, a grade report from the mid-semester grade check on October 30th will be included with the transcript. So when grades are pulled October 30th, that is the grade information that we will be sharing with colleges. Colleges want to have a sense of how students are doing in their senior year and will request grades. So since we don't have quarter one grades anymore, we will be using the mid-semester grade check on October 30th. So make sure all of your academic information is current, have all of your assignments turned in, have all of your teachers um, like make sure that um, you are showing your best academics by October 30th as that is the day that we will be pulling grades and that is what we will be sharing with colleges unless you apply after the first semester in which case they will just see your mid-year school report because that's when we update transcripts. Standardized testing so we spoke briefly about standardized testing, and so we encourage all of our students to take the SAT, the ACT, um, more than once. Um, so if you haven't, um, you should look at the fall dates. There are typically um, October, November, and December dates. Pay attention to the registration deadlines. Um, and Mrs. Rock is our testing coordinator. If you have any um, specific questions, um, you can certainly ask your school counselor, but she is the know-all of everything SAT and standardized testing. Financial aid, where to go for help with your FAFSA. So if you're having um, a hard time filling out your FAFSA, you can certainly ask your school counselor questions. But for more complicated scenarios, I encourage you to reach out to Fame Maine. Um, this is their website. They also have a helpline phone number. We have a ton of information about Fame here in the guidance office. It's the Financial Authority of Maine. They are the experts, and we highly encourage you to reach out to them with any questions. And the process for applying for financial aid is we want to be sure that everyone knows that the FAFSA is completed by students and parents for all schools. And then students and parents also fill out the CSS profile, but only for schools that require it. And again, you can find that information right on their financial aid page of each college. And then also we encourage all students to check each school's individual financial aid website for specifics on aid. There may be additional school grants, scholarships, mayor aid, etc. Um, their financial aid calculators, calculators are also there to get an idea of your estimated cost at each school. Holy cow, that was a lot of information. <laughs> so, all of you need to remember, you are where you need to be. Some of you will be further ahead in this process. Some of you will be just getting started. Some of you won't know where to start, and that's okay. You are all where you need to be, and you will all land where you need to be. We are here to support you, and so please use our services. You'll all 
work through all of it. Everyone is individual and that's why it's an individualized process and that's why we meet with you as individuals. So please reach out to us if you have any questions um, and we look forward to seeing you at your senior meetings. So don't forget to check your email. Ms. Peterson has set up a senior meeting for you. If you need one sooner, reach out to your school counselor. And when you go to those meetings, bring your college folder and your laptop.